Here's our LU70 unit. What we have here is a uplink broadcasting unit. It has several cellular modems, Sprint, Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, 4G LTE, Sprint WiMAX, all included. We basically, we take your encoding, we break it, in, we break, uh, encode it in H.264, break it up into packets and send it over several cellular networks where it goes and gets transferred over to our, what we call the LiveView server which is then looking for uh, all the packets coming in. We then aggregate everything and we send it out SDI to a switcher or you distribute it any way that you feel you'd like to distribute it. So I'd just like to go over just some of the settings for you guys if you can kind of uh, take a quick look. You hold down the power button for three seconds, it powers on, it takes about two minutes to boot. Then you hit connect, it connects all the modems, also another minute and a half to two minutes, so you're about four minutes. You hit transmit, you're on the air, and that's it. It's a three-step process. Now, you would think that's easy, but people want to say, we want it even easier. We, we want one-touch operation. So for this version, now what we did is, if you have your engineer or anybody, really, who understands the system, pre-configure the unit. And what do I mean by pre-configure? I know that when the guy goes into the field, he wants to do a live shot. So I'm just going to leave it on interview mode, quarter HD. We'll save that. I know what server he's going to connect to, 3U instance 1. So I'm going to leave that there. He's going to connect there. Now I'm going to go to Options, Settings, and I'm going to go to Startup. So here's our one-touch operation. You can do Power On only, which is the person does everything. Power On and Connect, so the system, as soon as you hit the power button, it'll power on and connect, but you still have to hit Play. And then the third one is, I want the system to do all three options. It's when, as soon as you power it on, it's going to automatically connect the modems. It's going to automatically start transmitting. All you got to do is power it on. So that's the final, final feature. One touch operation. This is, this is what our uh, uh, interface looks like. And I'll kind of go around real quick to show you. So you have the battery icon here with a charging indicator inside. You can see that. This is, this is our camera indicator. It also tells you the format that's currently looking for. This is our signal indicator. Currently, we're not transmitting, so it says no transmission information. Here is our status indicator. Just saying it's online. If I were to hit transmit, it'll say uh, 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 transmitting. Um, the Live View logo it kind of gives you some uh, licensing and version information. Uh, we do have IFB capability. So if you were to put uh, uh, audio into the Live View server, you can then connect to it here and through, um, and through a, a 3.5 millimeter speaker port, I don't know if you can see that, you can take uh, the audio out and listen in for IFB. So there's a return audio feature, okay? You can flip the screen back and forth if you, if you have something on the other side that needs to see it. There's a rotate option. Uh, you can lock the screen in case you're afraid somebody might, might touch something and stop your feed, and then it's one, two, three, four, to remove the lock. Um, here's our profiles. The profiles is kind of where a little bit of the learning curve exists. So I'll go over that and, and explain it to you as best as I can. So this is our HD profiles. Our SD are very similar, except it has different resolution names. I'll stick with the HD for this one. So we have interview, balanced, and max quality mode. Our interview mode is between one and three seconds of delay. Our balance mode typically is between four and six seconds of delay, and our max quality mode is typically around 12 seconds, but we added another feature that we call tunnel mode, where you can increase the delay even up to 61 seconds, okay? What does the delay do? The delay offers us the opportunity to, to um, retransmit packets that are lost or um, give us that extra buffer, that extra resiliency, so there's the trade-off. The trade-off isn't isn't really quality. Some people think of it as a quality. It's a resiliency trade-off. So, whereas if a network completely drops, like let's say you drive, well, we call it tunnel mode for a reason. If you drive into a tunnel and you completely lose connectivity and you have a 60 second delay, even if it's 30 seconds through the tunnel, um, you will not see any problem because we will catch up with the feed and just continue broadcasting. So, um, that's our, our max quality longest delay mode. But our recommended delay is 12 seconds in that mode if, uh, you know, for standard usage, okay? Uh, within those modes, 
Um, this version has automatic resolution, but uh, our current release version does not have that yet. So you have several resolutions to look at, Web HD, Quarter HD, Half HD, and Full HD. So with interview mode, we typically recommend to stay in the lower resolutions because uh, interview mode is, has almost no buffer, about a one second of delay. So over here, it's good if you stick with uh, Web HD or Quarter HD, okay? For balance mode, you have more buffer. You could feel more comfortable to use other modes such as quarter HD or half HD. Uh, you, can, you can try one and if people are on the other end are saying there's some issue with the broadcast, it's a little pixelated, you can always dial it back to uh, quarter HD and then even down to Web HD if needed. Max quality mode, you can feel the most comfortable with going full resolution, full HD, you know, tons of buffering involved there, sharpest resolution. That's my typical recommendation within that mode. Uh, we have two ways of uploading. You can simply take a file and do a file transfer to bring it over to the server. Put, stick a thumb drive inside the USB port, browse for the file, hit send. It'll take that file and send it over to the, uh, to the LiveView server where we're using all of the cellular networks combined. And uh, you can re retrieve it at the other end for editing, etc. Our other thing is called store and forward. You can do three things. You can store your video on the unit itself and, and you can dictate the video rate. So you're dictating uh, uh, the rate of uh, within our H.264 uh, in compression and it will stay that rate. It may take 10 minutes to do a two minute clip, but we, we guarantee that you have the, the good quality 12 meg or, or you can dictate, you can lower the feed. You know, as you could see, the, as I lower the video rate, you could see the, the recording time increases so you have more capacity on the, uh, on the uh, local server to store uh, your feed. Once it's stored, you can then forward your feed. So you just browse for the feed you just stored, you hit start, it starts sending it to the server, it lands at the other end where you can uh, or have it automatically play out of the SDI or you can retrieve it manually and for editing. Then we have store and forward, which is basically it stores while it's forwarding and all the other options the same. You dictate the video rate, you can change the name, you can uh, tell it to start playing out of SDI if you want, and etc. So you have that. We'll go just quickly through a couple of more features that we have here. If you go to options and then you go to uh, do, 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 settings. So with this we have uh, 422 encoding, which is a much higher level of encoding with this release. So it's a much sharper picture. Um, we also have, if I go to, let me show you the interfaces, options, then interfaces. You can see all of the different uh, modems that we have available. Um, T-Mobile, one is a Sprint, one is an AT&T, one is a Verizon. And if I scroll down, you see the Sprint 4G WiMAX, you see the Verizon 4G LTE. We also have Wi-Fi, we have LAN interfaces. And then one of our new features for this uh, version is we have a, a, a Wi-Fi GUI wrapper inside of our GUI itself. So you no longer have to exit and go to like Windows or some Wi-Fi manager. We manage it. So we simply go over there. And if that was an actual wire, wireless interface, you would see all of the um, uh, SSIDs, all the wireless networks here that you can choose and program and, and, and put in there for access. One more thing that we happen to have in this version is an access point. So every, all of our customers ask you, can we use your system as a hotspot, as a hotspot? We got it for maybe a year now. So now we can do it. So we can, we can now just click access point. You can choose which modem you want to use. And after you hit connect, there will actually be bit rates. So you can actually see which is the strongest. So I see, you would see that T-Mobile has uh, 800K. So oh, okay, that's my strongest. Let me use that guy for my access point. You, you assign some password, etc. And then you go ahead and hit start. And now you can open up your laptop and you'll see LU161904 will be an SSID. You connect to it and this is actually giving you internet. So uh, that's a, a feature we've, that's been requested for a long time. Here's our LU70 unit, one touch operation. 